and welcome to episode three of Landscape Photography Tips. So today we're going to be talking about ISO and how we can use ISO for our landscape photography to help us improve our photos. There's also a little money saving tip as well, so look out for that further on in the video. So if you're new to digital photography, let me just briefly explain what ISO is and what it can do for you. So ISO controls your camera's sensor's sensitivity to light. So the higher the ISO, the more sensitive the sensor is. The lower the ISO, the less sensitive the sensor is to light. Increasing the ISO will amplify the gain of the sensor, which will add digital noise to the image. So generally speaking, keeping the ISO as low as possible is what we're looking for in landscape photography. The lower the ISO, the cleaner the image will be. So with this in mind, why would we increase ISO at all? Well, generally speaking, it's to control motion in one way or another. So firstly, and probably the most obvious, is if we're shooting handheld. If we haven't got the camera locked down on a tripod, we're gonna have some movement. We can't hold the camera perfectly still. So we need to keep our shutter speed high enough to eradicate any movement. As a general rule of thumb, we wanna try and keep our shutter speed equal to the length or the focal length of our lens or, or above. So for example, if we're shooting with a telephoto lens such as this at 200 mil, we want to try and keep our shutter speed at least two hundredth of a second to eradicate any camera shake. Now, some of these lenses do have optical stabilisation, such as this one, which will help you shoot at lower shutter speeds. But as a general rule of thumb, if you work within that kind of guideline, you are definitely going to, you know, it's definitely going to help you eradicate any camera movement, any camera shake. So, so a two hundred millimetre focal length will require a shutter speed of at least one two hundredth of a second. This shot was at 1 60th of a second and you can see the shake in the camera. So generally speaking, when I'm shooting landscapes, one of the first steps I take for composing my shot is to determine what depth of field I need. So I've obviously set my shot up and then go in to look at what depth of field I'm going to need. And that's obviously going to determine what aperture I set for that shot. So with the aperture set, I then have only really one way of controlling my shutter speed and that's with my ISO. So say for example I'm using a 200mm lens, I'll need to make sure I've got 1 200th of a second shutter speed to eradicate any camera shake. So the only way I can make sure I can get to that level or above is by altering my ISO, altering the sensitivity of the sensor to light. The higher the ISO the more sensitive the sensor is to light, meaning the time required for the shutter to be open will be less the quicker the shutter, the less camera shake. So for example, this particular shot at f8, to gain a 1 200th of a second shutter speed, I needed an ISO of 800. I always say it's better to have a noisy image than a blurred image. At least we can correct noise in post-production where if it's blurred, we really can't do anything with it at all. So it's also worth noting as well that some lenses and cameras have image stabilization, this one does. And what that does, it allows you to shoot at lower shutter speeds as well. So that will help you keep your ISO lower. And it's a useful tool if your lens or camera has that. So look out for that as well. So secondly, we can use our ISO to control motion blur from a creative point of view. So even if we've got the camera locked down on the tripod, on a day such as today, when we've got a bit of a breeze, it's moving all these grasses, leaves in the trees, flowers, we might want to be able to freeze that motion and be able to capture a nice sharp shot. Now, once again, we've probably decided on our aperture for the scene that we're taking, depending on what depth of field we want. And we're going to need to be able to control the motion in the grasses. As you can see, these are moving around. So you'll need to experiment here because it will depend on the amount of motion that you're trying to freeze. Take this shot of this barley, for example. I've chosen an aperture of F11 to get my subject sharp from front to back. My shutter speed is only 1 30th of a second with my ISO at its lowest, which is ISO 200 on this camera. Now look at the motion we're capturing in the grass, as you can see it's blurred. Now this may be the look we're going for, but we also might want to eradicate that motion. So we'll just need to increase our ISO, which will in turn increase our shutter speed. So now we're at 125th of a second and that motion is now completely frozen and we've eradicated that motion blur. So from a creative point of view, we might want to add motion into our photograph. Moving water is a great example of this. Here we have two shots of two different waterfalls, one shot at a quarter of a second and the other shot at two seconds. The difference is very apparent. So this brings me on to my little money saving tip. Now quite often if we want to add motion to water, for example, we'll need to be able to create a sl slow enough shutter speed to be able to do that. Now in bright conditions, it's not always possible. So what we tend to do is add in a neutral density filter which will decrease the amount of light coming into the sensor of our camera. So 
For example, uh, a six stop ND filter will reduce the amount of light coming into our camera by six stops. So a stop of light is a universal measurement that can be applied to our aperture, shutter speed and ISO. So putting a six stop ND filter on the front of the camera will reduce the shutter speed by six stops of light. So if our unfiltered shot was 1 30th of a second, say, for a nice balanced exposure, adding a six stop ND filter would take our shutter speed down to two seconds for a correct balanced exposure. So maybe we don't really want to get that dreamy milky water effect that like two seconds and below will give us. Uh, the option here would be to put a three stop filter on and that would give us a quarter of a second exposure time. Now filters are expensive things and I personally do not have a three stop. I have a ten stop and a six stop but the thought of paying out more money and carrying more weight for a three stop is a little off putting to be honest. So what I tend to do in this situation is just to increase my ISO up three stops while using the six stop filter. So this will give the same result. Uh, with a quarter of a second shutter speed, just a little more noise, but at ISO 1600 it's so negligible that you can't really see it anyway, unless you're pixel peeping of course. So potentially you could do the same with a 10 stop filter as well, you could bump up your ISO to reduce the number of stops, you could turn 10 stop into a 6 stop if you wanted to. But one thing you probably want to be a bit careful of is the amount of time the exposure is going to be for because the longer the exposure the more you're going to notice noise in the shot and also if you're pointing your camera towards the light as well any noise in the photograph is going to be accentuated as well so a couple of things to look out for uh, and also if you're pushing your post processing if you're really pushing the shadows up or you know trying to reduce those highlights again this will introduce noise into the shot as well and obviously the higher the ISO during the exposure the more that noise is going to be visible in the finished shot. So as a rule of thumb ISO is a wonderful tool but try and keep it as low as you possibly can for the cleanest image but that being said don't be afraid to use it either because it really is a fantastic tool to have used in the right circumstances. So I've put a blog post together as well that will run alongside this video. You can go and check that out for some more information if you're interested. I'll leave a link to that in the description. You might be interested in my vlogs as well. I'll leave the link for those over there. The subscribe button's down there if you fancy subscribing for more weekly content. We're pretty much out every week. New videos every Thursday. We're either out in the landscape, shooting landscape photos, or doing these little tip videos. So hope to see you next week, guys. Take care.